Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to the videos of the paid request this time from Night of State? Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, Night of State sent me a bunch of pictures and stuff, and he just for each one of these, he wanted my thoughts on the designs of each of these, what I felt about them design wise. So I put them all in the collection and we'll go through them. It seems like a lot of uh, monsters, creatures, some of them are from the Godzilla and Kaiju films, or stuff like this from the original Fly uh, with Vincent Price. Which is interesting because I don't think these two ever beat in that film. And, I mean, the original Fly design there, where one head goes one by by four, not a bad design for that era of that 50s era it kind of what you think of you know a fly in a man size position and i think you did what you could for the time period i don't really have a lot of issues with this it's definitely recognizable it's definitely memorable if you're a fan of those 50s era movies I deal with the technology they had at the time. I can't really have a lot of complaints. Yes, of course, I prefer the remake to The Fly, which they had much more of a technical prowess, among various other things. Um, I do prefer that movie as well. But yeah, I mean, a man and a fly, you know, a fly, it kind of self explanatory. It's not a whole lot to say about it, but overall, pretty good for its time period. Of course, Ed 209 from Robocop, great design, this walking tank, love the sleekness of the, the top portion of it, doesn't have to have too many things to really pretend to make it more impressive than it is, it's already impressive, other stuff if you put on the top would have just been a, just a bunch of stuff thrown in that hit a wall to see what fits, and you didn't need all that. The sleek top part of it, the massive guns on the side, those are the things you want to hone in on. Those are the things you don't want to take attention off, because those are the things that are going to do the, the best of damage. The feet, of course, designed that way for when it tries to go down the stairs and falls down. Again, this kind of walking tank, walking mech. Uh, it's simple enough on the design wise, but yeah, it's very memorable. Definitely a top notch design on there. Very memorable scene in Robocop. Don't like that it was turned to a puppy in Robocop 3, but. <clears throat> that would actually be interesting for a movie. Like, you reprogram you reprogram Ed 209 and then it becomes an ally fighting side by side with Robocop. That could be an interesting twist, but definitely an enjoyable design. And of course, Robo came from Predator 2. Love the design. It's one of the reasons I like the movie. The movie may not be as good as the first one, but I love the Robo King design. I just love the idea of this robot that, because of the human form and its brain put into it, it's addicted to drugs. So you have the newt symbol where it could get that's fix. And it makes sense for World Cup too. Like it's bigger, it's more massive, much more bulkier. If it looks much more dangerous and threatening. You have the one arm that's like a Swiss Army knife that you do all sorts of things. You have the massive gun, machine gun, that just ram, just go crazy and annihilate everybody. The head. It just show the, the picture of Kane, his VR cartoon type face. Or to shut off and still have a somewhat face, but also a faceless visage that make it a bit hopefully creepier for people. The feet are a little bit more flexible to get around a bit better compared to Ed 209. Uh, again, love the design. I think they did a great job with it. Definitely the one of the highlights of Robocop 2. <clears throat> now I know this is from some of the, the Kaiju movies. For, I apologize if I don't forget these names because I'm horrible at pronouncing these names. This one, I don't know. I thought it was a bit of a lazy design. Grab for a split set, you think it was 
<laughs> this is supposed to be a very low budget version of Godzilla, but it's not. It's I forget the name of it, but it just looks like a a T Rex that had too much pimples. Needs uh, some Opti Clean, and he looks lost. He looks confused. It looks like he lost his keychain or lost his car keys, and he's pissed off about it. And he hates that his arms are too short, so he can't even put them down. And he needs his car keys to go to the store to get some more OxyClean. You know, get all those zits out of the way. So, nah, not big on the design. Grant is hard to harp on some of these films because they had penis to work with on a budget. But, uh, yeah. I just say that the T-Rex got a lot of pimples. This guy, he's a horny bastard. <laughs> and... The ears, I don't mind. They have a bit of a bat kind of thing with the ears. The horns, I'm not sure about the fact it's like this bright orange type of color. It seems like it would work better if it was like maybe white or something to that point. Just the rest of it has this like brown, you know, darker quality. So the orange, this seems a bit... I mean, I don't know. I'm just not sure about it. But, I mean, as a design, I mean, I've seen much worse. Don't have a whole lot to complain about. This one, they have a sea monster quality. <clears throat> Granted, it's nose. It looks like it's got a bit old whiskers. Or it's a. Uh, thinks he's Fu Manchu, but he forgot the goatee. Obviously, with the eyes looking like that, it looks a bit light, even more lifeless than it is. Of course, it depends on how it moves and stuff. <coughs> I mean, it definitely has like a partly you know, dragging quality to the face and the long, you know, horn like things sticking from the ear area to the sides. I'm not sure if it's a bad photo or, or this thing that just sticks out like this like a straw it's like he tried to suck on some soda and he got it stuck in the nose because he was too stupid to put it in the right orifice or he's doing cocaine and that's like a weird way of doing cocaine he's like he tastes it in the so maybe that maybe he's in the middle of doing cocaine maybe that's what happened he got laced with some really bad case of cocaine and so he got stuck in his nose and now he's going freaky and crazy trying to find his next fix I mean, there was Codeine Bear, so the Codeine Serpent coming soon to Sci-Fi Channel. That'll be coming soon. This guy, I think, is this Varan? Varan? Now he's jumping for joy. His armpits, he thinks he's Spider-Man. He's failing. Uh, he's hop along Cassidy, hopping around. Uh, that's not how you fly, man. You need wings for that. Uh, yeah. I mean, the face and body is like a little bit of Godzilla, but not quite the whole, say with the horns on the back. Kind of a wish version of Godzilla. Yeah, I'm not sure about the the bits under the armpits. It's, you know, serviceable, nothing, nothing that makes me stand and go, whoa. Unless he utilize better on screen. I, again, I forgot what this guy was. Um, was this an early version of Damara? That's how you know you have the if a Ninja Turtle had rabies, or is too horny and got his fix, so he had his heat. I don't know if turtles have heats, but he got fix on. He can't find something to hump, so he's humping this thing here. But yeah, if a Ninja Turtle went feral and wanted to find April for some horizontal fandango, maybe it's him. That's why he, it's probably Raphael. That's why he has a pissed off face here. But, you know, giant walking turtle, I'm a sucker for those, but, yeah. I'm sure in, in future installments he had you know, a bit of a better design. Here, I guess, is serviceable. I mean, you have the turtle shell there. Face, definitely a bit of pissed off look. Again, first time period, can't be too mad about it. <clears throat> Robo King Kong. I think it was a like Teen Con Escapes. Of course, you were reminded of Mecha Godzilla. So it's like if we did it for Godzilla, let's do it for Teen Con. I mean, I guess it's simple enough design with the legs and the arms, uh, the face. 
You know, electrolyte team con, and then you have this little thing on top that maybe shoots some rays and stuff. I mean, nothing too creative, nothing too inventive, but I guess, you know, simple and sleek enough to serve its purpose. I know this is from some of the later Godzilla films. Uh, if uh, Dragon was Humpty Dumpty and an old ha witch hag, it'll stick this horn up your teaster. Uh, don't mind the face and the big old horn in the middle. You have the teeth, but then you also have some extra teeth on the sides. Don't mind that, it makes him face seem a bit more intimidating. You have the actual wings there, unless, unlike Baron. It's a bit weird that his legs have like these spikes on, they almost look like another pair. Because he has spikes on his feet, but he has spikes on his shins. Um, it seems a bit of busy work to have horns on both parts. I think the feet would have been just fine, and then he has his claws, but I guess, you know. I guess they thought from his feet to his hips is just a, too, too, a bit too plain for them, so let's put some more horns on there. But other than that, I mean, that thing in the middle, it looks like that Zedra just punches his fist right through it and get to his heart, but although not a bad design. Not a bad design at all. This guy, looks like Andrew Centino. <laughs> It just looks like, you know, a redhead. Maybe it's Conan O'Brien got turned to a kaiju. This is what it is. Conan O'Brien, he got turned to a kaiju. And he's a bit pissed off about it, looking for Andy. Let's try to get him back. Once again, got the pimples. Probably took some really bad poison ivy. Got the sits pack, though. I guess even kaijus need to work out, so he's got the sits pack. You know, this I remember seeing... And stuff back to the day. Again, the, I think it's the, the orange hair that always made me laugh a bit. I don't know why. Just something about that just caught me a bit off guard. The rest of it is, eh, you know, it is what it is. I don't really have much f feelings about it. This, I always thought, was kind of a blase design. Just, I don't know, a walking hemorrhoid. What is this? A walking hemorrhoid. Oh, I see. All over his face. Just the face and the back is like, okay, you got bones there, you got the arms, you got no hair. Uh, the face, you, do, you see an eye, you can see a bit of the, the teeth there. But it just felt like you have something, you just kind of plaster stuff on top of it, and I don't know. It looks like a walking hemorrhoid. This is a ba uh, Baby Godzilla and some of the later ones. Face looks a bit too cartoony. A bit too Saudi morn cartoon. I mean, like the body on the back looks a bit too clean, a bit too sleek, so it makes it look a bit more fake than the other kaiju. Like, it does look like a toy. Like, it does really look like a toy sitting there. So I'm not sure about it. Again, it just looks a bit too sleek, a bit too toyetic. And uh, I think maybe the eyes have the anime eyes. Anime fuck me eyes. It's just, I don't know. This is a little bit too too clean, too sleek, too fake. This, I do remember this is uh, one of the later Godzilla films. I always thought this was a cool design. I think what it is, is it looks like this crazy insect. I mean, it is this crazy insect creature with the, the size of it. Intimidating kind of. Looks like they really scratch the hell out of you and sharp and jagged. It's because they're so jagged. And then I think it's the eyes. It's just the blood red eyes that make it much more of a seeming threat. Even the wings. You see like these little horns and like talons on some of the wings. So even if it just do you, it could cut the hell out of you. Even its head. Kind of like this almost, not quite saw, but almost like a hatchet axe head. In the middle there. I always did. I always thought this was one of the better designs in the later Godzilla movies for the villains. Space Godzilla. I always thought this looked goofy. I always did. I thought, man, it's like Godzilla took a lot of steroids, along with you know, marshmallow milkshakes, and combined the two of them. And now these like two 
icicles like drive the back. It's like, oh, Space Godzilla. Okay, he's got crystals coming out of his shoulders. Like some really funky sh shoulder pads. I don't know, it just... This kind of weird thing with this, these big crystals on the back. I don't know. It looks like rock candy. I think that's what it is. It just looks like rock candy. Like you went to a rock candy fa factory, fell in, and became this. So I was never gun ho about that design. This... It's like, let's take Metro Godzilla, but the guy who designed it kept thinking about sex. So the nose, the feet, like everything's drill. Fat bottom girl, the fat ass. And then just, he just he, he did a penetrating something, penetrating. So his arms are penetrating, his chest is penetrating, his nose is penetrating. Even his eyes are penetrating. It's like, you're supposed to design Metro Godzilla. I did. Go get laid. And get out of your system. Come back. <laughs> now, Guy Gan, always one of my favorites. Always one of my favorite villains. Just something about this design. It's the buzzsaw in the front. So he gets near you. You're definitely screwed. The fact that he just all ha just has these claw, these not even claw, but just these type of arms that. He can't grab anything, it's hard for him to grab, but at the same time, just a walking knife. Like, walking, you t knife ready to stab the hell out of you. I think it's the eyes, I think it's just almost this visor, like, red for its eyes. Give it almost like a Terminator feel. Of course, this is before Terminator, but it's that, the eye, the, the red visor, I think it's just something about that give it like a Terminator feel. So it just feel more like a threat, intimidating, and that's what I'm surprised they haven't done in one of these new Godzilla films to have Guy Gan in there because it's such a memorable look for a villain. Cause Jet Jaguar. For I understand when they did Godzilla vs. Megalon, a kid like there's a contest for kids to draw in, and this was what a kid drew. And I just see why. It's like, you know, you have... Uh, I keep thinking of Inframan, but no, that's not the what I'm thinking of. Ultraman. You have those Ultraman type of stuff, so you have that type of body, but then you have... You have Colorful, so here's red and here's yellow. A little bit of blue there on the collar. Uh, definitely much more suited for kids. Kind of candy-coated. <laughs> For kids, it's colorful. So I always liked Jet Jaguar. You know, maybe because I'm a sucker for that film. I'm very nostalgic. It's the first Godzilla film I ever saw, so I think that's a big part of it. But uh, I know someone they did this series of little Godzilla shorts where they included people like Guy Dan and Jet Jaguar. So I think that's kind of cool. I, I actually didn't don't mind this design. Maybe, you know, the yellow underwear looking thing is a bit weird. Let's say he's wearing, again, yellow underwear. And he's a his pants on, but... Overall, I didn't, I didn't mind it, but I'm nostalgic for it. The Smod Monster... I, I like the Smod Monster. I like that movie quite a bit. As it is, I mean, the way this picture makes it look, it makes it look much more plastic looking. I do think it looks better in the film. But yeah, he's got the large eyes. Didn't definitely see a bit of red in there. I mean, for a spawn monster, it's kind of hard to go like, what else could it look like? But at the same time, if I say it's a spawn monster, you look at it, oh okay, yeah, it looks like a spawn monster. Like, the title fits for what the creature looks like. Yeah, maybe I'm partial to it because I'm such a big fan of the film, so I'm, I'm able to overlook his discrepancies, but... Yeah, it doesn't bother me too much. This guy looks like, I don't know, a dog, a werewolf, and a kaiju had an orgy and got together. And so he's got like half fur, half not fur. His tail went to the bushes and got a bunch of those little bush, what do you call those little things put together that you usually got to get off your animal, your pet. These little 
I don't know what the hell you call those things, the little fur, things that stick to the furry idea in the mouth whenever they run into the grass or whatever. Or it looks like he killed a golden retriever and has put the body on his back. <laughs> what do you think, you are Craven the Hunter? And the dog ears too, like these weird dog ears. It's like, is this a great grandfather of, of Barf from Spaceballs? Yeah, the, the design looks a bit goofy. It looks like, it's like they couldn't, do you want it furry or do you want it not furry? Do both. Or they try, like they try to put fur on this and then they gave up. <laughs> so I, I'm not a fan of that design. This one, so a kaiju became a punk. Got the punk rock scene and decided, I, you know, to have his hair, his fin like that. This is a punk phase. He's listening to Billy Idol. So I, I guess if Billy Idol was a kaiju, it would be this. I could dig it. Uh, one horny bastard. I mean, it's uh, like the early stages of the, the one I talked about. The 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 end set. Was it Medidurus? Could be wrong, but the early stages of it. Again... That's what it looks like, at least. I'm not sure if exactly it is. Cause I can't remember those films the best. I mean, it's like, uh, kind of, it looks like Mothra in its early stages, only he's got this big old horn. It was a bit weird because it looks like his dick. He's proud of his dick and he wants to show it to the world. Look how big it is. We did it, buddy. Stop, uh, stop floundering around. Stop boasting. Stop boasting. Ah, okay, and this is where he is later. Caterpillar became this thing, so that's what it is, yeah. Yeah, this one looks a bit better. It's like an evil goth version of Mothra. If Mothra went to the... I don't know. The Tear. If Mothra started listening to a lot of the Tear and decided to get, you know, can't have piercings and go to goth club, so decided to become this. I could be fine with it. <laughs> now this looks like... I, I do like this. It's like a horror horror feel to it. It looks like the body of one of those creatures from the Dark Crystal. But then the head is like this you know, dinosaur monstrous. It looks like his heart is ready and willing for everybody to see. There's all, all this blot stuff around it. It does kind of look like the, the bad guys in the Dark Crystal, especially when they rebooted it. Looks a bit like that. Tamron, where this is from, he didn't mention them, but I forget. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind this one. Yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, of course, Metro Godzilla, great design. It's simple but effective. You got the hands that can shoot rockets and stuff and lasers. Uh, looking like Godzilla, but sleep design. Same with the face. It's recognizable. Uh, but at the same time, it's not overproduced. Yeah, I don't have much issues with that. This, I remember, it was in Godzilla. Was the son of Godzilla? It was one of those. And it was the spiders. Uh, Granted, the eyes looked a bit more fake than it should. At least the eyes looked a little bit off. But the the lays, I like this little bit of yellow here. Because, you know, there are spires that have certain spots on them. I remember that sound to me. And all the web it would shoot. I think it was Sunder Godzilla, and that always stuck in my mind. Because that was one of the early Godzilla films I saw. I mean, other than the eyes, I, I don't mind the other bits of the design. You know, looks like a dangerous tarantula. Ibira, uh, that was from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. I like that movie for what it is. Especially his Highlander moment where, like, the lightning hits and Godzilla comes out. But, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a crab. It's just a crab. A giant crab that fights Godzilla. I mean, when you're given that task, you only do what you can. I think they did what they could with the task given. A giant crab, giant lobster eating, or trying to fight Godzilla. It is what it is. I, you know, 
take it or leave it. I have to be fine with it. It doesn't bother me too much. Now this baby Godzilla, I would say the face is a bit better. It's quite a bit better. The face doesn't look as cartoony. You still have the innocent eyes, but they're not so wide enough that it's like anime. The body, I mean, granted with the lighting and the camera, you could make it look a bit... But it definitely looks a bit more like skin and less like a toy. I would say this is definitely a better version of uh, Baby Godzilla than the one previously. This one I don't mind. I mean, with the right lighting, you can hide set the seams and the, the body, but yeah, the face I, I thought that's actually very appropriate for that type of character. This one. Was this from uh, Center Godzilla? I can't remember which one this is from. Yeah, don't mind this. Not quite Prey Mantis, but close to it. Uh, I think the eyes work better here than it did for that spider we saw before. Uh, of course, Angerous. Always getting his ass hit. That's the thing with his creature. I always think he always gets his ass hit. And Godzilla either has to save him or Godzilla kits his ass or something. So, Seems like a neat design, especially with the armadillo from hell type of back it has in there. Porcupine from, you know, it did. You think it would do some very heavy damage. It just, he's never really been used as well as he could have been. But the design wise, never minded the design. Rodan, simple, effective. I actually don't mind the Rodan movie. I know he was using Dazzle T and the Monsters, but I don't know. I think he could have been used better. You know what? I like I like to see a new Rodan movie. If you don't make all these Taiju movies, just a, its own Rodan movie. Maybe help flourish the Rodan character. I don't know, something about this creature, the design of it, something about it works for me. I can't really, I don't know how to put into words. You have this pterodactyl, of course, mixed with the, the Taiju aesthetic. Just something about it works for me. And it's destructive force of it wings. This one, I mean, if a chicken got AIDS and then took some meth, gobble gobble, mofo. King Dador, I mean, granted, this picture's not the greatest if you see the wings, but King Dador is a great design. You know, the three heads, each one had that sinister look to them with the squinty eyes and the stuff going to the back. Like it's always snarling, like a snake, or, or some other creature. So it always seems like it's always angry and dangerous. To have three heads, and of course the strings are you have to control each of the three heads independently and puppeteer all of them. Definitely feels like a massive intimidating threat for things like Godzilla. This, I forgot, because I know some of this... These pictures are from like a Teen Wolf TV show and some from other TV shows. I can't remember. This one, you know, it looks like the original design of the Predator before they changed it. Like if you watch the initial Predator designs, they was going to be more inset like. This is what it kind of looks like. And maybe it works better for a TV show, but it would not work for an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I mean, you don't really see where the eyes are at, and it seems like more of a mask or a skull than anything. And the, the body's like, you see like a little bit of rib cage, and then insect kind of arms. I think it's effective for a TV show. Or like a rip-off, like Robo War, <laughs> or Red Brown. But I wouldn't say I, I, I love it to that, but actually, it's not bad. Uh, yeah, it's just the face, because of that, it doesn't have a pristine, memorable look. It just looks like a, a skull of a cow, or something to that, to that effect. This, I think it was titled Ghost Rider, but not the comic book. I mean, it's a cowboy from the dead, it looks like. Don't mind the black duds, not overcomplicated. This gun, not sure what kind of gun he's using. The face is, is far away enough. 
can't really see the details in his face. It looks like, I don't know if he has no eyes or mouth, or they're sewed, or, or what the deal is, but, you know, I wouldn't want to see that in the, the middle of the night. I don't know what that light's coming from. What, is a UFO coming? I mean, I don't want to have a better look at the face, but, you know, the, the clothes, the duds, aren't too bad. This, I, I think, the eyes make it more goofy than it is, because the face looks like Freddy Krueger mixed with Uncle Frank from Hellraiser when he had the skin off. So, and yeah, this is like the, the if the skin was off, you just had the muscle tissue and, and etc. But I think the eyes just make it more goofy than it is. So I would say that the way they make the eyes glow is just, eh. I think we'll work better without it, honestly. Yoda, I mean, what can I say about Yoda? Classic, done by Frank Oz, the, the voice and such. And especially this Yoda. Like, it, the face works perfectly, the, the wrinkles, the, the skin tone, the behavior of the character fits with it. Unassuming, you seem like, oh, well, just a little guy hanging around here. Who would ever think this would be a Jedi Master? But it works well. And it just had the right skin tone, the right enough of wrinkles and stuff to make it seem like, you know, the eyes aren't too wide or too narrow. Just the, the, the parameters worked very well on that. The sand dune, I mean, the sandworm dune. Pretty simple. Granted, now anytime you think of this, think of a penis. Especially those popcorn buckets that apparently when the new ones came out, people had some fun. I guess, you know, they didn't get the toys at the adult store that we eat, so let's get some popcorn buckets and have fun. Although to me, that'd be more uh, like a cheese grater on your dick, but that's just me. But for the films itself, I mean... And granted, I think of think of Sandworms, I always think of Beetlejuice, but you know, Doom was before that, both the novel and the David Lynch film. But I I think for as simple as they are, they're very cool designs. You know they, but it does look like you know, what's in my pants right now? Darth Maul is a cool design. I think it's the the tattoo patterns of the red and black. And then the the yellow and red on the eyes make it much more foreign, much more alien, and much more of a seeming threat. It just screams fire, anger. And I think the mistake they made is killing him too early in the first movie. I think what they should have done is make him the big threat, at least to until the third one. Maybe he's this guy that no matter what they can't kill and then lo and behold when Anakin is Darth Vader or whoever he does kill this guy. You're like wow the, the fact that this guy is such a badass and then how do we make Darth Vader a badass? Wow Darth Vader was a kill this guy? No wonder he's such a big threat to the universe. If he can kill this guy who else can he kill? But you know, uh, the design is definitely a great design. Now, he had some Star Wars pictures. He had a lot. There was uh, dozens of them, but I had picked a couple. You know, the Jawa, you know, worked well for what he needed to do. I think because you don't see its face, you just see his eyes. Although, anytime you see him, you just want to kick him in the face. The Tusken Raider, uh, again, maybe they got a lot of radiation burns, so I got high in my face because he's too ugly. His mother would cry. Arcona, if E.T. got stoned, defell, if a werewolf got on PCP. Some of these ones at the bottom I don't recognize. I recognize the two on the bottom right, but they were on screen like briefly. The two on the bottom left, I don't remember. But granted, they look kind of bland, so that's why I don't remember. The uh, towels... I think just because it's like, an, it just streams like a different species, so maybe that's why, great they all do, but that one with all the fur around, it just seems a bit more memorable. 
And Advo's, you know what Advo, uh, I'll say Advil, yeah, need a headache. Well, he looks like he's got a headache with what he's got there. He looks like if he was, you remember Blade from Puppet Master? It's his dad or his drunk uncle. Is that I'm tired of this trap. Ah, uh, the original Godzilla. Worse for its time. Granted, the eyes seem a bit goodly moodly. But again, for its time, it was definitely effective what needed to be done. There definitely would be some better designs later. GMK being one of them. But, it, you know, classic design worked well for its time period. This is like one from, from one of the early werewolf films. I forget which one. And, I mean, this is when... This is the time period you had... What's his name from Stairway to Heaven? Nah, Stairway to Heaven. Nah. Hi he Highway to Heaven? Michael Landon. When he had a, I Was a Teenage Werewolf. Like, that movie. Like, that kind of stuff where it's just, okay... We don't do the old school like we had with Lon Chaney Jr. Back to the day with the wolf band. Did he die... Give him a perm, give him a beard, put some teeth, put some makeup around here. Now, anytime when I see this, I always think of the stuff that parody did, like Transylvania Seats 5000, where the guy had this almost exact same look, and you find out that he just, you know, you just need to shave, or whatever the hell you need to do. I did first time period, they couldn't do much with werewolves. I mean, it's not like they could do American Wolf in London, The Howling, those type of effects at that time period. So they did what they could, and granted, I think The Wolfman is a much more memorable look for Back to the Day. Here it's like if, I don't know, if that Wolfman became a mountain, mountain Man or Lumberjack or Paul Bunyan or wanted to sell some paper towels or brawny. With the, you know, it looks like almost a flannel shirt, almost. So, but I mean, I, you know, it's hard to get mad at films back to the day when they didn't have as much to work with. Yeah, that, that was a definitely much more of a vicious feel to it. Nice practical effects there, especially the bloodshot uh, eyes. I think that really sells it. The slickness was like sweat pouring off it. Uh, I forget what he said this was from, but that's definitely a pretty good effect there. I think that might have been from Teen Wolf, and I think this one too, that's why it's MTV. I mean, not a bad effect. Definitely reptilian snake. The back, I'm not sure the back, the back seems like it might be CGI, but then the front. The the parts that are more practical with the light hitting it. Do you see like the lights not really hidden, reflecting anything back here? You see like there's no light reflection, but then it stopped. Then we have right, like, the light reflection here. And that just makes this feel a bit more real within the scene. These eyes might be fake though. I would say maybe like the head and stuff like that stuff is effective. Again, the snake-like creature. Not sure about this part, though. I'd be like, if you start a practical, just make the rest of it practical. Trisha from the Black Lagoon, of course, is a very famous aesthetic. I know at one point, John Carpenter wanted to remake this film. But something fell through, he wasn't able to do it, so he had to begrudgingly do the remake of Village of the Damned, which he wasn't, he wasn't gun-ho about, because he wanted to do this, and Rip Baker was going to do effects on this, but so then it came about. It would have been inter interesting to see, I guess it'd be kind of, the, the design would be kind of like the Deal Man and the Monster Squad. But definitely memorable with the, the body type, and the face, not quite human, not quite animal, kind of mix of both. Definitely an effective design. This one, I remember I saw this, I'm like, okay, is this a purse or is this a mountain? Because I thought I was like, okay, this is a mountain, people climb, and then, but no, I guess this is a, per this is a creature. And his head's on fire and open up. I don't know about it being open. It seems like, you know, 
Get a bucket of water. Here you go, boy. <laughs> Better watch that. Better put on a hat. People don't douse it with some water. Interesting, there's no eyes. So you're just seeing through it to the back there. Like I said, don't know how it looks on whatever show or movie this is from. I can't remember where it's from. If it's... How much is... it will probably be a lot of it. At least this part probably be CG, I would assume. But, uh... Like I said... It looks like a fire pit that got out of control. And there's people to the side drinking beers, ready to get their... Marshmallows and wieners hotened and threatened and burned up. So I don't know about that. This, I thought it was from a Gremlins. But no, I think this is a Gremlin on a different show. I'm like, oh my god, they're doing a Gremlins reboot in this? No, I, apparently this is what a Gremlin looks like in another show. Now, of course, they can't rip off Gremlins, otherwise they get sued. This looks like if a Furby had a sex change operation. And wanted transition. And so, if Fur remember those Furbies that was a thing for five minutes? He, the Furby transition, dyed his hair pink, and uh, decided to pimp herself out to sick girls in Hollywood who liked them young. So, yeah. Transitioning, but this one, a slutty, perverted femboy gremlin furby i don't know i don't know about that one this one uh again it just looks like a skull someone took from an animal a mask I'm not sure about the blue light the blue light might come off a bit cheaper than it looks but i mean if i'd, I'd have to see this and this is one thing i'd have to see in motion that might be one of the things that, as is, it might not be the best, but let me see it in motion. But there you go, know, yeah, he just wanted, he just had a bunch of random pictures. I couldn't choose all of them, I apologize, because I knew the video would be even longer, but just giving some uh, random bits. Now, granted, my favorite designs of monsters would be like the Xenomorph and Alien, Aliens, the, the Queen and Aliens, who I guess would say my favorite, the Queen and Aliens. Um, the blob, the way, at least the way it can make people look, I, sh I guess I should say, in the 1980s. Dark Curve is a thing, of course, that the Norris creature with the defibrillator and all that. The John Carpenter's a thing, especially. I like the, the creatures in Tremors, Graboids. I think that's a cool look for them. Even the Shriekers, I don't mind, and Tremors too. There's a lot of monsters out there, a lot of designs out there that are pretty good. A lot not so good, but you know, it is what it is. But with that said, thanks for watching. Thanks for the United States. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.